Hi, everyone. I'm Katie Tam. I am one of the health coaches that have been working with you guys the last couple of years during the health screens. And today I'm going to talk to you about fast food dining. So some of the things that we're going to talk about today is why we eat fast food. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the health risks that are associated with eating it on a pretty regular basis, uh, what makes up fast food, and then um, talk about some healthier alternatives when we are eating out. And just to quickly go over the definition of fast food, I'm going to lump in um, mainly like your Wendy's, your Arby's. Um, I even threw in convenience stores there. I didn't get into a ton of sit-down restaurants, um, but we'll definitely focus on those ones that you're going to be stopping at in the morning or maybe during a quick lunch break. So talking a little bit more about why we eat fast food. So we essentially are a fast food nation. There's stuff everywhere. You could drive down the street in Peru, even here in Logansport. You're going to find quite a few different places that are available. Um, it's just, it's very easy for us to, to access fast food and going into that, you know, convenience. So, um, you know, if, I know most of you probably have families, maybe you have kids, um, maybe you just don't have a lot of time to um, make your food around the house. So it's just really easy to go through a drive through It takes them five, 10 minutes to put your meal together. Same thing with the time. Um, maybe you're running late or maybe you um, just got done with a late night practice with your kid and you just want to quickly get home and not have to take, you know, worry about taking an hour to, to get dinner ready. Money is another one, another huge motivator there. Um, most places have some type of deal, um, dollar menu, or, you know, Wendy's has like the, is it a $4 um, meal box or something like that? Same thing at a Taco Bell. Most places are going to have some type of deal going on and cheap food. And then advertisements, they're everywhere. Um, you know, whether it's a billboard, whether it's a commercial, whether it's on the radio, whether it's on social media, um, it is always in your face that you should be getting some fast food. So let's talk a little bit more about some of the health risks here. And, you know, this is not an, ex, you know, it, an exhaustive list. These are just some of the main ones, but um, most fast food is high in, um, you know, calories, sodium, fat, cholesterol, sugar. Um, and when you're consistently consuming that, it can, you know, if it's excess calories, well, it could lead to obesity. It could lead to high triglycerides. Um, maybe you're eating a lot of um, sugary foods or just um, sugary drinks. It could lead to some diabetes problems. Sodium, high sodium levels can lead to high blood pressure. Um, and then some other things there, you know, you see asthma, digestive issues. It can lead to some cancers, um, PCOS for the women. Um, you know, there's a lot of different things here that it, it, that it can relate to when you're eating it consistently. And just to briefly go into some studies here, um, this one was um, comparing people, well, young adults who ate fast food more than two times per week versus someone that ate it less than once a week. And what they found was that the people that ate it more gained more weight after about 15 years and had a two times um, increase in insulin resistance. So having some problems with diabetes possibly. Another study um, looked at um, a westernized diet, so mainly fast food in recently developed countries. And what they found was that people that even ate it once a week, their, in, their increase in risk from like heart disease, dying from heart disease increased by 20% versus people that don't eat it at all. And then obviously it's gonna increase for each number of times per week that you're eating it. So someone that's eating it two to three times per week, they found that risk, risk increased by 50%. Um, it, and then it also, they also found that the type two diabetes risk rose by about a quarter. Someone that's eating fast food four or more times per week, that risk climbs substantially to about 80%. 
So um, just some food for thought for you with some of these studies. And, and then this last study here, it was done in children, um, children that had uh, asthma, chronic stuffy nose, uh, skin conditions. And they found that um, the kids who ate fast food three or more times a week had increased risk for those conditions or those um, like the asthma, the stuffy nose and the skin conditions. Um, and then just to throw it in there, you know, being a health coach and all, they found that if the kids were eating three or more servings of fruit, it appeared to reduce the severity of those symptoms. So always going to try to plug in some fresh fruits and vegetables in there for you guys. So you can see, you know, those, those, those are just a small amount of studies that kind of show how fast food can affect you and increase your risk for heart disease, increase your risk for type two diabetes, and even increase, you know, in children, especially that risk for certain things like asthma that you don't necessarily think is, you know, related to fast food. So let's get into um, the nutritional composition of a fast food meal. So I mentioned earlier that, you know, they're usually very high in calories, depending on what you, what you get. We're going to go over that a little bit later, but a typical meal, if you get, you know, a fry, a burger and a soda, it's going to get you really close to your nutritional calories for the day and certainly put you over for sodium and fat and carbs for the day. Uh, usually there's um, added sugar in a lot of these, even things that you don't think would have added sugar in them. Um, there's usually a lot of sodium. That's kind of a big one there, especially if you have high blood pressure um, or heart problems. You know, you want to watch the sodium content and even the healthy things you'll see later. The healthy things even have a ton of sodium in them. So it's hard to avoid the sodium when you're eating out. And then the butter represents um, fat. And most, most of the foods that you eat at fast food are going to have some type of um, saturated fat in them. They even have trans fat and trans fat's the one that we really want to avoid. Um, trans fat will lower your HDL. So it's going to lower that good cholesterol. It's going to increase your LDL, which is your bad cholesterol and increase your triglycerides. So most fast food, you know, are going to find it in most burgers is going to have at least one gram of trans fat, which we don't want any, um, saturated fat. There's a little bit of leeway there and, and you're going to find that in, in almost all fast food, but that's, you know, kind of the typical break breakdown of food. Um, most of the food is also going to be like low in fiber because it's not, they're using refined bread products or re refined flour products. So you're not going to find a ton of fiber in some of these things. Um, there are a few, we'll, we'll go over those later, but um, it's just when you're eating it consistently, you're not getting a lot of good nutrition. Um, your body's not going to feel too good. And I wanted to go into a little bit more of, you know, getting into like down here at the bottom, you can see the calories and the sugar and soda. The U.S. obviously has problems with sizes. I don't know if you've ever been around anyone that's visited our country and has been like, you know, the, uh, the surprise here is how big your food or how big your portions are. So um, in a child size 12 ounce cup, there's about 110 calories in the drink. So not awful, but it is a drink. So you're just adding to it, but the 28 grams of sugar is over what you should get in a day. Um, added sugar, sorry. So about 25 to maybe 35, 35 on the high end grams of sugar of added sugar in a day is what's, you know, they want you to stay under that. So you can see as you go up in sizes there, how that added sugar can add up pretty quickly and the calories, you know, in a large drink, you have pretty much what you should be eating with like a hamburger. So <clears throat> if there's any way you can, you know, reduce the size that you're drinking or switch to water or switch to a diet, um, unsweet tea, anything like that, it can help out tremendously, um, especially if you are overweight and maybe have diabetes problems. Same thing with the fries here. Um, with the fries, we're looking at sodium also calories, but saturated fat content. So just to give you an idea, our saturated fat should be um, less than 10% of our daily calories. And if you have a heart risk or heart problems, it should be less than 7% of your daily calories. So not a lot of room there. So three grams, you know, is okay, but the calories are really bad in like a large, I'm looking at the large size there. So 490, you know, 
you can get a cheeseburger for that and, and be much, much more filled because cheeseburger is going to have some protein, whereas the fries aren't going to have a lot of protein in them. Um, then the sodium content. So again, I mentioned when you're getting a burger and fries and a drink, it can really add up with the sodium content. We'll go over that a little bit more later, but um, you know, again, if you have high blood pressure or you are worried about heart problems, then you really got to watch that sodium intake. And um, if you can go for a small or even a value size, it's going to help out quite a bit. And sodium intake, I should say, so sodium intake is around 2,300 milligrams for the day. If you have heart problems, that jumps down to 1,500. So some fast food meals, a burger, fries, drink, it's going to surpass that 1,500 easily. So uh, least healthy choices, which you guys are probably not going to be surprised by, but um, anything that's got you know, multiple patties on it, bacon, maybe a cheese sauce. I'm thinking like if you go to Arby's and get the beef and cheddar, um, anything that's got mayonnaise on it. So if you can, you could switch the condiment on a sandwich, um, ask for no mayo, and you can get your own packets and put your own stuff on. Uh, any type of large size, so a large fry, a large soda, chicken nuggets, fried chicken, those are all, you know, depending on how many, you know, if you got, you know, a four piece chicken nugget, that's not terrible, but it's probably not going to fill you up. Um, special sauce, tartar sauce, anything that's like cream based, uh, gravy, whipped cream, all those things. Um, when you look at the menu, probably things you should avoid or get not very often. So let's get more into um, healthier alternatives. And we put together a fulfilling fast food checklist. And I know that when you go out to eat, you're probably not going to look at a menu and know exactly if the food that you're trying to order has this. Um, so we put together some stuff for you. We'll go over it later, but we're looking for something that has less than 20 grams of fat, um, you know, and even less saturated fat something with less than a thousand milligrams of sodium. That one's pretty hard to do. Something with 15 grams of protein or more. This one's a little bit easier to do. Most of your cheeseburgers are gonna have, you know, somewhere between 15 to 25, maybe even 30 grams of protein on it. Um, carbs, somewhere between 45 and 60 grams of carbs. This one, again, is a little harder to do depending on where you go, especially if you're getting a cheeseburger and fries, you're gonna go over that almost every time less than 600 to 700 calories. This one's okay. You can do it if you finagle the, the menu a little bit. Um, it's just, it's hard to do when you get a, a, a meal with burgers and fries. Five grams of fiber. Again, this one's a little harder to do because there's not much fiber in fast food. And can you get at least one serving of fruit or vegetable? Most places now are going to have something available, whether it's like apple slices or a side salad. So we'll play a little bit of eat this, not that. So let's start with McDonald's. Um, if you can get a quarter pounder without cheese and maybe some apple slices instead of fries, you can see it's a pretty decent meal. It fits the bill for that fulfilling fast food checklist. I didn't really put the fiber on there, but it's going to be, it's not going to be five grams, but um, you could even get, you know, a cheeseburger. It doesn't necessarily have to be the quarter pounder. You'd save even more calories with the cheeseburger. Um, but when you start to add the quarter pounder with cheese and a small fry, you can see how it doesn't quite double the number of calories, um, but the carbs go up by quite a bit. The sodium goes up by quite a bit. So if you have heart problems, you know, this one on the right hand side there um, with the fries, you're pretty close to your daily allotment for the day. Arby's. So Classic roast beef sandwich, 360 calories. That's really not that bad. The carbs are a little high. The sodium is definitely a little high for just the sandwich. You could probably even get um, like a side that they have there that is maybe a side salad um, that would keep you down below where you need to be. And then the one on the, the right, but not that one, it's a little misleading because it's one of their market fresh um, choices. But I wanted to show how um, the sodium level, you know, it's a little more calories. Um, you know, a little more fat, a little more carbs. And then the sodium is definitely over where you need to be if you have heart problems. So a little misleading on that one. Taco Bell. Um, Taco Bell, when I looked at all their stuff, everything 
is incredibly high in sodium here. So just be wary if you do have heart problems or high blood pressure, watching that sodium intake when you go to Taco Bell. Um, and, and we'll go over more options there because there's a lot on their menu. Um, but they have a chicken power bowl that uh, is pretty good. It's got quite a bit of protein in it. It's got some healthy fat in it. Um, still very high in sodium. But then you have their grilled stuffed burrito. And um, this is just the burrito. You know, you're looking at almost a thousand calories. Saturated fat content isn't great, but then you're um, pretty dang close to the sodium allotment for someone that just has no health problems. You know, you want to stay under that 2300. So quite a bit of sodium in those. Wendy's, um, you can get the double stack with some apple slices. Um, under 500 calories, pretty good on sodium and um, okay on the fat versus the Dave single and a small fry. I didn't add the soda in here, but if you did add soda, it would definitely be over a uh, thousand calories for the meal. Um, the sodium jumps way up with the, with the fries. You could probably even do a Dave single and some apple slices, but that Dave single is about 600 calories for the sandwich. Um, so, you know, you can pick and choose on these things, but um, fries are always going to add quite a bit of sodium and quite a bit of calories. I think a small fry is pretty close to 300 calories at Wendy's. Burger King, um, instead of a regular Whopper with a small fry, you could cut way down on the calories and get a Whopper Junior without mayo. You could probably do mayo and be just just okay. Um, even a garden salad added to that. Um, and, you know, sodium is still really high, but you're going to cut way down on calories, way down on fat. So um, something to think about when you go to Burger King. Burger King doesn't have a lot of great options, just to throw that out there. Um, even their breakfast is not really that great. So if you can find something other than Burger King, I would highly suggest it. So some fast food tips. Um, or the smallest size or order a smaller size. So if you're someone that always gets a large, can you do a medium? Can you do a small? Um, can you get a value size versus you know a small? Can you get a side salad or fruit instead of those fries? Those fries add up really quickly. If you can avoid fried items, um, but I showed you earlier, just because something's on like the market fresh meal or it's a grilled chicken sandwich, you gotta be careful with those because the condiments can add up pretty quickly. But typically, a grilled chicken sandwich is going to be a little better than um, a hamburger or a fried chicken sandwich. Um, water, or unsweet tea, and coffee are better options than regular pop. Even a diet, a diet soda will help you out a little bit if you're just not ready to make that jump yet. Um, add your own condiments. So maybe you really do like mayo and don't want to go without it. Well, don't get mayo on the sandwich and add it yourself. Um, if you're diabetic, sometimes you can remove half the bun just to help with some of the carbs. Um, if you do get a salad, if you can do oil-based versus cream-based because you know, something like ranch is gonna have 150 calories in it, quite a bit of fat and sodium versus like an Italian dressing or even like a vinaigrette, it's gonna be closer to like 45 calories and um, less sodium. Uh, asking for a salad without cheese and bacon. So the cheese and bacon are just gonna add um, saturated fat and sodium. So if you can go without it, that, that helps um, just a little bit. Know what you want ahead of time. I know some people that will look online at the menus that the nutritional count is on there. If you are really serious about making some changes, that is something you could do just to get an idea of what things are like. Um, avoid skipping meals. When you skip meals, your blood sugar is going to crash and you're going to be really hungry and your body's going to want that um, readily available glucose, which comes in the form typically of uh, refined carbs. So that's usually fast food. <laughs> so if you can avoid skipping those meals, you're going to order less probably, not be as hungry and not reach for whatever is available. And then avoiding buffets. I know we didn't really talk about uh, sit down restaurants, but I just threw it in there anyway. Buffets can get you in trouble pretty quickly. You always want to get your money's worth. So let's apply our fulfilling fast food checklist and our fast food tips here. So on the original side, you see a large fry, large hamburger, large Coke, just a large size. See how the calories add up, the fat, the carbs, sodium. Just by making um, 
a better choice with ordering a smaller size, switching to a Diet Coke, you're gonna save um, quite a bit in all of those columns. Carbs are still just a, a little on the high end. Um, fat is okay. Um, but if you do the best choice, so you have a hamburger with a side salad, um, oil-based dressing and a water, um, that's a pretty dang good meal there for eating out. If we did a chicken sandwich, so um, I know you don't have like a Chick-fil-A around, but you could do something like this if you do go to a Chick-fil-A um, or even, you know, Wendy's has a, a chicken sandwich. So a fried chicken um, breast, fries, large Coke, same, same concept, but the, the carbohydrates are way higher and the sodium is way higher. So switch to grilled instead of fried and all of a sudden it comes way down. Sodium still high, but um, significantly better. And then you see there, if you did a grilled chicken, green beans, so a vegetable side and a water, and that's a pretty manageable meal minus the sodium. Sodium is still way high. Sandwich makeover, so think something like Subway. Um, same concept. The cheesesteak, anything that's like that is going to be higher in sodium, higher in calories. Chips are going to increase the carb intake, um, fat intake, sodium intake. So um, if you can go to turkey breast or grilled chicken, it's going to make a huge difference with the, the fat intake and the calories and the sodium. So we, we briefly hit on drinks. Um, you can see here how the calories and, and the sugar can add up pretty quickly in some of these things. Water, unsweet tea, coffee tend to be the best options. If you can do diet, you know, by all means, go for diet. Um, if you're an energy drink person, if you can do a zero sugar energy drink, if you're just not ready to give them up, um, it can just make a huge difference in, in your calorie intake for the day and your added sugar intake. So let's talk about some fast meals here. So I didn't really mention a whole lot with Subway earlier, but I'll mention it now. So with Subway, we're looking, um, you know, ham, turkey, those are all going to be pretty good options. If you can get it on a, like a whole, the whole wheat sandwich bread, um, a flat bread's okay. Um, th that's, you know, you're going to get some fiber with that bread at least. You can even get your potato chips still, um, you know, stick with a six inch versus a 12, um, 12 inch. Anything that's going to be like your cheesesteaks, your Italian bean tea, like your cured meats, those are always going to be way high in fat, way high in sodium. Um, so ham, turkey breast, veggie delight, that one's okay. I put it on there, but it's not going to have a lot of protein. So I would be wary of that one. Um, but if someone doesn't really like cold meat, then the veggie delight is a way to go. Arby's. So we mentioned their classic roast beef sandwich. Um, their turkey gyro is pretty good. Um, they have a couple different um, salads. The ones with the roast chicken are, is going to be better than the crispy chicken. Their sliders are okay. They're just a little higher in sodium. Their side salads are fine. So those are decent meals. But again, you can see how the um, sodium is just, it does not matter what you do. It's always going to be super high. Their French fries, we put the potato cakes just because the potato cakes are a little lower. You could probably get a smaller value fry. A value fry would be better than the small because their smalls are pretty big there. Um, so that's another option as well. Wendy's. Um, their grilled chicken sandwich is pretty good as long as you're getting the one that doesn't have a bunch of toppings on it. They have apple slices there. They, I think they did take away their um, side salad. They have a couple good salads there. I think it's like the chicken Southwest salad. That's not a bad option, but their salads can add up really quickly with fat, sodium, and calorie and sugar intake. So doesn't just because it's a salad doesn't mean it's ultimately healthier. Um, any of their like junior cheeseburger deluxe, their double stack, their small cheeseburgers on the value menu. Those are, those are decent ones. Um, as long as you're not going too crazy with the sides. So a small fry with that junior cheeseburger deluxe, you can see how it, it's high in carbs there. It's kind of high in sodium. Um, but it's decent with the calories. Uh, you could get more bang for your buck with the apple slices. Um, even a small chili, you could probably do a small chili and be okay. But I know sometimes, especially when it gets a little cold outside like it is now, I'll get like a plain baked potato and a small chili and, and that kind of tides me over. McDonald's, um, their breakfast, 
options are not terrible. You know, the, the egg McMuffin's a pretty good one. You can also do like the oatmeal. I believe they got rid of their fruit and yogurt parfait, which is a little disappointing, but um, even like the sausage and the egg McMuffin is not bad. But the things like the McGriddle, um, the croissant, uh, not the croissants, but the biscuits, kind of want to stay away from those. If you can go for the McMuffins, those are the better options. Um, you know, as far as hamburgers go, anything like the hamburger, single hamburger, kind of like what I said with Wendy's, if you can get the smaller sandwiches, you're probably okay and you can get away with a small fry. Um, you could do a McDouble and then get apple dippers with it. So you're probably gonna get more protein with the McDouble. Um, at, you could add your own condiments. You could, um, you know, a small fry is gonna put you up pretty high with the calories and the fat and the sodium. So again, picking and choosing what you really enjoy. Taco Bell, um, this is another one that almost, I mentioned it earlier, almost everything there has a lot of sodium in it. So if you can watch what you're doing, you know, try not to get a bunch of sides or try not to get the biggest thing on the menu, um, but three crunchy or soft tacos, you're looking at around 500 calories. Sodium, like I said, is pretty high. Carbs are okay. Um, but the cheesy bean and rice burrito, black bean burrito, the cheesy potato griller, um, those things, they have some protein in them, but when you start getting into the, the bigger items on there, like the Chalupa or even the, um, the Crunchwrap Supreme, those things just start adding up really quickly. So you can get one of those burritos plus a side like um, cinnamon twist or chips and guacamole, cheesy roll up, you know, it, it's okay calorie wise, okay fat wise. Um, the carbs can add up very quickly. So if you're someone that's trying to watch your carbs and Taco Bell may not be the best place for you. Someone watching your heart, or your blood pressure, Taco Bell may not be the best place for you. So convenience stores. So this one is, I'm guilty of this too. Sometimes I will be running out the door and it's easier for me to just stop at a gas station and grab a bunch of things versus sitting in line somewhere or going into a, um, fast food restaurant. So most places are going to have some type of fresh fruit or veggie. So if you can get that, um, sometimes they'll even have like a hummus, guacamole, peanut butter, like pack that you can use. Uh, that's what I'll do. Casey's, for example, will have like grapes and cheese cubes, maybe even some pepperoni slices. We'll have hard boiled eggs, um, trail mix, but, you know, beware of trail mixes that have a ton of like candies in it. So maybe a trail mix, that's just like a very basic, like nuts with maybe some M&Ms in it, um, mixed nuts. So, you know, if you can stay away from the salted ones, that's the best, but sometimes you, it's hard to avoid. Cheese sticks, jerky is okay. It's, it's high in sodium, can be high in fat, but it's gonna have some good protein in it. So um, any type of meat and cheese package snacks, so maybe not a launchable, but there are places that are starting to branch out with that now that will have um, kind of a better option for you. Cottage cheese, any type of protein drinks there. Again, you gotta be wary of um, maybe added sugar, but there are some pretty good protein bars that you can find in some of these places like a Quest bar, um, maybe a Cliff bar. Um, if you're gonna do a drink, can you do unsweet tea, coffee, water? If you're an energy drink lover, can you do a zero sugar energy drink? Um, pork rinds, yogurt, if you can find Greek yogurt. Um, but you just really wanna avoid the, you know, Casey's breakfast pizza, their donuts, um, actually any type of breakfast pizza or pizzas. Most of those places are going to have just a bunch of fried stuff there, like you know, fried fish, fried chicken nuggets, um, anything and everything that's fried. So if you can find, there's usually like a little island that will have some decent food choices. If you can go to that and just grab a couple things and kind of make a meal, that's that's a good option for you. <laughs> And then alternatives to drive through. So I'm always going to plug in, you know, can you pack your own lunch? Can you bring your own stuff? Um, take some time the night before, put together, um, you know, something. It doesn't have to be crazy. It can be a cold meat sandwich. It can be some fruits and veggies. Maybe it's leftovers from the night before. Can you take a water bottle with you? Um, here's just some quick options. You know, I, we're big fans of just cold meat sandwiches. So um, on, you know, a turkey sandwich with some whole grain bread and an apple. Um, maybe you had tacos the night before you could make a taco bowl, um, or maybe you made spaghetti, um, you know, you can take some spaghetti, but bring a salad with you or something, um, chicken stir fry, you know, it doesn't have to be anything too elaborate. 
Um, but any way that you can um, reduce the amount of times that you're going out to eat or stopping in a convenience store, the better. So just to end this up here, um, fast food does tend to be high in calories, sodium, saturated and trans fat, added sugar. I know it's not easy to avoid it completely, um, but if you're eating it more than two to three times a week, then it's going to start leading to some health risks down the line. Even if you're not experiencing them now, you'll more than likely experience them down the line, whether it's like cholesterol, blood pressure, obesity, um, things like that. So um, if you can make some small changes, if, you, if it's completely unavoidable, making small changes. So you, can you order a smaller size? Can you get your fruit or a veggie as a, as a side? Um, can you do a diet soda or a water? Um, can you, you know, get a smaller cheeseburger, anything that you can do to just make small changes? Um, and then try packing, you know, lunch a few times a week to offset the number of times that you're eating fast food. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Again, my name is Katie Tam and my email is listed there, ktam at logansportmemorial.org. Thank you guys.